This is gonna be a lot, but please try to stay until the end and hopefully I can present it well. I have to start off to say that this video isn't to say that the resin system does or does not need changes because I generally don't care either way. My journey is penultimately the same. If they increase the recharge rate, cool. I can do things a little bit faster, but it doesn't really make or break the game for me. Right now I'm spending about 200 to 220 resin a day without refreshes and if I do refresh, it's typically only enough fragile resin to go a world rank up the week before. So in other words, I do the math and if I'd hit AR45 next Monday, I'd instead use fragile resin. That way I can capitalize on my weekly bosses. I also want to point out that you get two fragile resin per adventure rank up. I only point this out because I've seen discussions and forum posts mentioning Genshin should fully max resin on adventure rank up and it, it does already. However, it doesn't force you to use that resin then and there. It gives you the option to utilize it immediately, which is a nice 600 adventure rank bump, or you can save it for later when your domains and bosses reach higher efficiency with your world level. I'm doing a healthy balance of both saving and spending. In terms of resin, I honestly feel people are looking at the scope of what they need to do or want to do and just feeling a little bit overwhelmed without trying to digest and properly allocate. Yes, there is a lot to do, but no, you don't have to do it all at once. Now remember, I'm not trying to tell you what to do or what you have to do. I'm just gonna ha explain like my process farming, okay? For example, after hitting AR36, I focused a lot on talent domains and held off on weapon domains until AR40 when they would uh, peak efficiency and start giving a chance at gold drops. Instead of trying to give the slice of life of every single adventure rank, because I probably don't even remember anyway, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of my game plan past AR40. I'm gonna take a look at things I need to do. I need character experience. I need Mora. I need weapon domains for weapon ascensions. I need talent domains. I need legendary artifacts. I need bosses like the hypostasis, etc., for character extensions. And then I need my weeklies. That is all the possible things I can spend resin on in order to progress in strength and there's no way I can do all of this, but let's try to prioritize. The next ascension isn't unlocked until AR50. That's a long time, longer than most, but that being said, at AR45, artifact domains and talent domains peak in their efficiency in terms of drops. Talent domains are a little bit less of a priority because again, I farm talent domains a lot from AR36 to 40, and there's a re weekly limit after your talents reach level six, where you need like one of three random drops from Storm Terror or the Wolf. So after all that, this is kind of like what our hierarchy looks like. And now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper. Um, the Traveler, Jingling, and Venti are my current priorities with secondary priorities on additional DPS Diluke and additional CC Sucrose and then my healers. So first and foremost, I'm gonna make sure my primary characters and weapons are able to ascend and level immediately. When it is unlocked, because they will see the most action and will, you know, be the key to progressing in the spiral. So focusing on the concrete objectives in their ascension means character ascensions first, then weapon ascensions. Anything after that, whatever spare time I'm left with goes to character experience and Mora either for their level 90 rank up and the spare characters that I need to level. Uh, we can push legendary artifacts and talent domains until AR45, so those are just pretty much set aside. More specifically, that means farming the animal hypostasis until I can craft enough crystals for Venti. It would mean making sure I have enough flowers and hurricane seeds, but those are doing well, and I'll make sure I have enough slime condense. Uh, then essentially doing that for uh, my other core characters. Fortunately, Traveler doesn't require any boss runs. I have my flowers, so I only really need to craft the mask. Once Venti's crystals are done, I'll start running the Pyro Regis Vine until I have enough for Jing. At two Everflame Seeds per Regis Vine, I'll have to run eight times, but likely, you know, two to four extra runs to have enough crystals, which works. And worst case, I'll just use those materials for Dilute. So that's about 12 runs, 40 resin each is not even three days worth of farming, assuming I spend 220 each day. The next priority afterwards is their weapons. And this is a bit more complicated because much like the hypostasis slivers fragments and chunks, it's a bit of a variable. But let's just run with the drop I got and say you get two green, two blue, and one purple per run. Though I should mention that there's a chance to get a gold outright, I I'm just ignoring it. After three runs, you'd have three purple, six blue and six green. After crafting, that's one gold, two purple, and two blue. Let's say we don't even craft the blues or greens upwards, and for this weapon, I need nine runs, which is 180 resin, leaving me uh, 40 spare from my daily total runs. Even not crafting up the weapon doesn't take more than a day of farming, and all the other requirements is just making sure you have a daily murder spree that doesn't even cost resin and really shouldn't take any time at all. 
My three core characters would be done after about six days of using my resin, which leads me to Sundays. Sundays are the best days to schedule your weeklies or extra bosses since ascension domains are cluttered, but it's really fine to run them at any point during the week so long as you won't reach a new world rank that week and you don't need something tied to a specific day. So for example, if I didn't need any of the Monday domains and I was AR41, I could just run my weeklies on Monday. So after a week, our timeline looks like this with our character and weapon ascensions ready and all my spare time can go to stockpiling character experience and Mora they may need or just using extra on my secondary characters. That still gives me about four or three adventure ranks to focus on whatever, which for me, I'm likely to spend that time alternating between character experience and Mora, which I'll be able to run about 11 per day. But let's say I spend six days on each, 66 runs, let's say three hero writs per run. That's enough to get a a single character a few levels over 70 at 3,960 experience. And that doesn't even include the blue adventurer's experience. After about a week of Mord, we have an additional 3,432,000. Equally, these will likely continue to get better after AR 45 and 50 and any other world rank ups, so I'm not sure it'd always take a full week to fully level a character. Not to mention this doesn't include the 8 plus fragile resin I can reasonably use and still have 20 left over. After all that, it's very hard to approximate what adventure rank I'd be, but likely still not AR 45. And remember, this is pretty much all I've got on my plate until 45, so I'd likely just continue my Mora and EXP farm to give my supports a little bit of love. Post AR45 is legendary artifacts until I reach some level of satisfaction. Uh, but since there's so much RNG, I could likely be running them until I'm AR50, but I doubt it. Whatever gaps I have, it just goes back to EXP and Mora until I'm finally free at AR50. My primaries would be done, and then I can pick up like three more characters to do the same. But wait, I probably have a decent spare amount of resources, so it shouldn't be as daunting. Not to mention all my domains are at peak efficiency, so it'd be easy or say pick up a new weapon and get the ascension material like it, am i am i crazy it seems like i'm about to max my spiral squads the next month not even including like any gifts or events that mihoyo throws at us all that being said i get it you want to level and play with all the cool characters i mentioned it in beta but i i more so wish that there was a way to extract experience from characters artifacts and weapons can always maintain their value but say mihoyo introduces a new character and you suddenly don't need your level 90 noel well too bad you're stuck this hurts a lot more for me than the resin system limitation Anyway, uh, thank you all for taking the time to listen and make sure you keep giving your feedback for the resin system and stay constructive. Again, my intent is not to deter discussion about the system, but more to get us all on the same page because this is probably the lens that developers are looking through. If you like this sort of content, bat that subscribe and like button, but otherwise feel free to discuss in the comments or find me on Twitch below. Stay lovely and be the kindness you want to see in the world. Below you can find a link for my Klee Whale funds. I just, I really need another character for my expert. <laughs> uh...